Hello, in this presentation, we will take a look at multiple choice questions having to do with the adjusting process. First question, a principle requiring identifying the activities of a business with specific time periods is the A. Operating cycle B. Time period assumption C. Revenue recognition principle D. Matching principle E. Accrual principle If we go through these, once again, the question of a principle requiring identifying the activities of a business with specific time periods is the A operating cycle. So I don't think that's going to be it. We're not requiring the, the identifying of activities of a business with a specific time. Operating cycle kind of talks about a time. We're talking about a, a time frame, but it's not going to be the operating cycle. Time period assumption. So that's going to assume that we have uh, a time period that we're going to be applying to. It sounds pretty good. We're going to keep that here. I'm going to go to the next one. Revenue recognition principle. Uh, that That's going to tell us when we recognize revenue, basically when it is earned according to the revenue recognition principle. Uh, but it's not going to be identifying uh, the activities of a business. It identifies the revenue, but that's actually not, um, not going to be it. And then the next one is going to be the matching principle. And that also applies uh, an accrual principle, this being related to the expenses, recognizing the expenses uh, in, in accordance with the time period that they helped to generate revenue, to match them up to the revenue. But that's not going to be it. And then the accrual basis, that's going to be uh, these two principles here. And no, you, you might be able to, when you see a question like this, if revenue recognition sounded good or matching sounded good, and then you say, oh, well, they're both there and they both might be good. And then you see the accrual basis, which again covers both the revenue recognition and matching because they're all basically in the same kind of wheelhouse. Maybe we obviously we can't pick all of them. So possibly none of them uh, that could be a grounds to eliminate them, in other words. And we're going to be left then with the B time period assumption. So we're going to say B is the answer. If we read this once again, we have a principle requiring identifying the activities of a business with specific time periods is the time period assumption principle. Next question. Prepaid expenses, accumulated depreciation, accrued expenses, and unearned revenues are examples of A. Items that require contra accounts B. Assets and equity accounts C. Items that require adjusting entries D asset accounts, and E, income statement accounts. Once again, the question of prepare uh, prepaid expenses, accumulated depreciation, accrued expenses, and unearned revenues are examples of A, items that require contra accounts. Now, a contra account is an account that, had, that is contra to the normal balance. The most common one that we run across would be accumulated depreciation because it's related to the... Um, the equipment account or some type of property plant and equipment and it has a credit normal balance to bring it down the total equipment but the others are not contras so it's actually not going to be a one of them has a contra account but they all don't and then b assets and equity accounts so if we go through there we can we can say hmm prepaid expenses that looks like an asset accumulated depreciation that's a contra asset a kind of asset accrued expenses uh you could say uh it's going to be and not an asset, but a liability. Unearned revenue, also gonna be a liability. So we're gonna say assets and equity, no uh, items that require adjusting entries. That sounds like it could be it. If we go to D, we're gonna say asset accounts. Again, we have some liabilities up there, so that doesn't look correct. And E says income statement accounts. And I don't think any of them are income statement accounts that are listed here. Not that there wouldn't be income statement accounts in the adjusting process, but that's not it. So we're left with C here, items that require adjusting entries. If we read through that one more time, we're going to say prepaid expenses, accumulated depreciation, accrued expenses, and unearned revenues are examples of items that require adjusting entries. Next question. An adjusting entry could be made for each except A. Prepaid expenses B. Depreciation C. Unearned revenues D. Owner investments E. Accrued expenses Reading through that one more time, we're going to say an adjusting entry could be made for each except A. Prepaid expenses 
Prepaid expenses are an item that we do have adjusting entries for. It's one of our, our categories of expenses, the most common being prepaid insurance. So that is not going to be our answer because we do have an adjusting entry for it. B says depreciation. Depreciation related to the depreciating of property, plants, and equipment is an adjusting entry and therefore it will not be it. C says unearned revenues. Unearned revenues is going to be revenue that or cash received that was not yet earned and therefore uh, we do need to adjust it and therefore it will have an adjustment and not be the answer here. Then we have the owner investment and hmm, that doesn't I don't I don't recall an adjusting entry for owner investment. I'll skip that for now. And then the last one says accrued expenses. Once again, that's going to be one of our categories of adjusting entries. And so it will be an adjusting entry. We can cross that out, leaving us with the answer of owner investment. Once again, question, an adjusting entry could be made for each except answer D, owner investment. Next question. Preparing financial statements based on the principle of recognizing revenue when earned and matching expenses to revenue is... A. Cash basis. B. The matching principle. C. The time period assumption. D. Revenue basis. E. Accrual basis. Question once again. Preparing financial statements based on the principle of recognizing revenues when earned and matching expenses to, re match to revenues is. So we're going to say A. Cash basis. Uh, that's going to be the opposite of what we're talking about because we're recognizing revenue when earned. So that's not going to be the cash basis. B says the matching principle. And that it is going to include the matching principle because we are matching expenses to the revenue. So we can leave that right now because hmm, that kind of sounds like it's part of it. C says the time period assumption. And uh, you can kind of see we have something to deal with timing but it's actually not going to be that item because that deals with us being able to, to basically record things in chunks being uh, typically months, quarters, years. Next one, revenue basis. Uh, so we do see revenue here. So I mean, we might be saying, hmm, maybe that has something to do with it. And then E says accrual basis. So accrual basis is our normal, you know, general, generally accepted principle of recognizing uh, revenue and expenses. So if we look at what we're left with, our question once again being, preparing financial statements based on the principle of recognizing revenues when earned and matching expenses to revenues is, if we look at our left answers here, we've got the matching principle, revenue basis, and accrual basis. Now, I'm going to say that the accrual basis is really the overarching thing. And if we look at the matching basis, it, it only applies to half this. It applies to uh, the expense side of this because it's one of our accrual principles. And the other is the revenue recognition principle. So this isn't even really the right term. If it was revenue recognition principle, it would be given the other half of this recognizing revenue. But the term that, that covers both halves would be the accrual basis. So answer and question is... Preparing financial statements based on the principle of recognizing revenue when earned and matching expenses to revenues is E. Accrual basis.